Good morning, everybody. It's Lynn Hay Salmon from Kaboki.com. Today, what I want to discuss with you is mental illness, specifically um, the stigma surrounding mental illness. For those of you that don't know, I am a recovering alcoholic and drug addict, and I've also been diagnosed with bipolar. That was in 2008. You, you know, coming to terms with being a drug addict and alcoholic is, is not very easy at all. Um, in fact, it, it takes a while to break through your denial and I was probably the last person to realise that I really had a big, big problem. And I didn't want anybody to know. I was, I was incredibly ashamed. And, um, you know, the things you do when you're an addict and alcoholic is, is not very, um, you know, it's nothing to be proud of. And. I thought that everybody would think that I'm a, um, a loser and a failure. And for, for myself, the way that I pictured, even though I was an addict and alcoholic, the way that I pictured a alcoholic is someone like lying on the street in their own vomit, maybe lying in their own pee, um, you know, completely blotter. And I pictured like a drug addict was like a heroin addict, was someone with a, passed out with a needle, um, you know, sticking out of their arm. And while my addiction was very, very bad, I didn't quite see it like that bad. Um, anyway, you know, I got clean and I, I got diagnosed with bipolar when I was in the cycle in 2008. And I, I struggled with that a lot. I, I, I didn't understand what bipolar was. For those of you that don't understand, uh, very simply put, bipolar is um, having extreme uh, mood fluctuations. So a normal person in mood does fluctuate, so you feel bad mood mood, um, you might be sad, but it's not It's not extreme, it's kind of a norm. And having bipolar means that you've got periods of mania, which is an incredibly good mood where you are hyperactive, and then you've got um, periods of, of, of lows, which is, you know, it, it can be, you know, it, it's, it's, it's basically depression. So, you know, and it, it's hard to manage yourself, it's hard to, um, to stay stable. So th this was this was very hard for me to take in, and I didn't want anybody to know about my problems when I f when I first was diagnosed. And um, a little while after I was out of rehab, it was quite funny. I was walking down the street, and I bumped into a girl that I was in school with, and she asked me what I'd been up to, and I don't know why, but it just came out. I just said I've been in rehab for <laughs> for nearly a year, and she said to me, "Well, that's that's wonderful news." And so that, that highlights two things. Um, it highlights the fact that I was lost and I was an addict because the last time I'd seen her was in school. Um, she knew already when I was in school that I had a big problem. But also that people are sympathetic. People are not um, are not as judgmental as you think. Well, sometimes they are. <laughs> but um, my experience has been that um, you know since then I've taken the, the steps to be very open and honest about my problems and where I'm at, especially with my addiction and the bipolar disorder. And the, the response has actually been incredible. Did you know that there are one in four people that are, are going to suffer from a mental illness at some stage throughout their life? So whether it's postnatal depression, post-traumatic stress disorder, depression, anxiety, um, any of these things, one in four people are going to suffer in some degree from a mental illness. And this makes it clear that, you know, not only do a lot of people suffer from it, but there's a lot of people that are affected by it. If your mother has depression, if your father, um, you know, if you've got a family of four, one, one of those people will probably suffer from a, from a mental illness. And this will affect the entire family. And this is what I found. When I tell people I'm an addict or I'm an alcoholic, I found very often that the person has it, that they've actually had a problem themselves, or someone directly related to them, like their parents or their brother or sister. And this has helped me kind of break free of the stigma of mental illness. I, I don't feel so much shame anymore. I'm, in fact, I'm quite proud of myself because I have a mental illness and I'm overcoming it. I'm managing it. I am, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis, my mental illness is not affecting the people around me anymore. And that's something to be proud of. That takes a lot of hard work. And, you know, if you're suffering from a mental illness, I, I actually highly recommend that you, you open up and you start talking to people about it. And at the end of my blog, um, in, my, in my, my written blog, you will see that I have shared a number of uh, 
links to mommy bloggers that have also shared about their mental illness. So um, you can see that so many women have suffered from postnatal depression. If you read my articles, um, I also suffered from postnatal depression quite badly for six months after my first baby was born and I shared about that and the response has been absolutely overwhelming. You know, if you just search online and you start connecting with some of these people and talking to them, you'll see that, you know, it's it's not just you. There are a lot of people going through exactly the same thing as you. And to go get yourself some help and to move through it would be a really, really good idea. Anyway, if you like this video, please give it a like. Uh, please subscribe to my channel. Please check out my website. The link will be below this video. And I hope to bring you another video really, really soon. Have a great day!